Now the recipe for my brick color, at least that I'm going to use on this dungeon, is going to be as follows. We are going to have two parts of matte fluid medium, one part of red oxide acrylic artist tube paint, one part sepia India ink, and two parts of the slow dry fluid retarder. So here's what we're going to do. I've got uh, a set of, uh, you know, measuring, and this is what, uh, I think this is like a half teaspoon. I'm going to make enough just to do a test to make sure that everything flows correctly. And I suggest that you do the same because you may have a different brand of paint. Or even the same brand of paint may be a little thicker depending on what batch it happens to be. So two parts of the matte fluid medium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to pour it in here, and there we go. I'm going to pour that in. There's one part of matte fluid medium, and we'll do it again. Okay, and there we got two parts. Alrighty, and uh, the next thing we're going to have is one part of red oxide. So I'm going to open this up, and I have found if you do the matte fluid medium first, it's easier to measure this because, you know, this is thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this out, out of the tube here. And I'm going to take a good guess at what that's going to be that would fill up this uh, uh, half, uh, half teaspoon here. And then, since I did the matte fluid medium first, it just kind of drops right out of there. So that's kind of handy for mixing. We're also going to need one part of uh, sepia ink. And a lot of times this ink will come in these nice little bottles that you can kind of squeeze out and kind of put in there. Uh, after a while you'll get to the bottom of the bottle and it will be kind of hard to get to so I'm just going to pour this stuff straight out of the uh, straight out of the bottle here and I'm going to use one part of the uh, sepia ink let's put that in there and now I need two parts of the slow dry uh, fluid retarder and like I said this pours kind of like water okay so there's one right there and there's two just like that Okay, be sure to wipe out your uh, thing here. I'll just wipe it off with a paper towel, kind of clean that off. And then you're going to mix it up. Now, this stuff probably would have mixed up a little easier if I had mixed these two up first and then added the liquid components. Uh, because sometimes this red oxide is a little bit hard to get to mix. Now I've mixed up three batches of this first ink wash. I did one exactly according to the measurements that I've just given you. I mixed one up a little too thick and I mixed one up a little too thin. And I want you to be able to see the difference between how it goes on. If it goes on a certain way, you'll know you'll need to add something to it. In other words, let me show you the first one of how it goes on uh, with a good mix. Basically, you paint it on and let's see, I'll get, I'll get up right up to it. This is what it should go on. It should cover fairly well, go down into the cracks, and that's probably about what it should look like as it's applied onto the surface, okay? And so you should be able to scrape up the drips, just kind of go across the side of the cup there, and then you can kind of uh, suck any excess off of the surface here and should be just about like that. that that's kind of what the uh, a good one should do. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you what it's like if it's too thick. This one, I didn't add enough of some of the uh, other elements to it, and when you paint it on, you see that it paints on, it almost looks like straight paint when you're painted on. You'll notice that it doesn't kind of do the light and dark uh, between, you can almost see a little bit of a light and dark, but you see that if it goes on and you paint it and you can see brush strokes in it, if you can see brush strokes like that in it going across, and, and I mean really fine brush strokes, and you don't see a lot of difference between light and dark, that means that the paint is too thick. You need to see those differences between light and dark. And if I scrape this sort of uh, out of here uh, and I scrape across it to try to lighten it up, I'm seeing brush strokes that uh, won't really disappear. If your paint is too thick, you need to add this fluid retarder to it. The slow dry fluid retarder is what you need to add to thin that paint down so it won't dry. So if it looks like this, slow dry fluid retarder.
Now let's see what it looks like if we get it too thin. This I had mixed up and if you have the paint too thin or if you have the wash too thin it'll go on the surface it'll still probably look okay but it's a really light pastel and you see when the ink drains away from the surface it almost looks like there's white behind the surface you can almost see the white paint coming straight through it if it acts like that and uh, um, from what you see here if it looks like the, the white paint is coming through you don't have enough paint in there you uh, either need to increase the increase the paint or the ink I would suggest you know adding a little more of this thicker paint to it to get the proportions to where they come out like they're supposed to here so if I soak this out and uh, uh, kinda pull this back off of the surface here you can kinda see the difference between the three Let's see if I can get these three up to the camera where you can see them close here. Okay, the one in the middle is just about right. The one on the left is too thick and the one on the right is too thin. So that'll at least give you some benchmark, some guideline to go to see if what you're mixing actually flows like it's supposed to flow. Now the white undercoat's completely dry and now we're going to put on our first, uh, our first wash of brick. I uh, just mix this up, you know, be sure everything is mixed up really well and that the uh, pigment and paint is all uh, nice and smooth uh, because sometimes it takes a little bit for the uh, uh, the paint from the artist paint from the tubes to uh, dissolve into the rest of the stuff. Now I'm going to start with, uh, I've got a couple of tests here. Always be sure to do tests and make sure it flows right on the test then uh, you can add or adjust you know as you need to so what I'm gonna do is I've got a I've got my brush I'm gonna dip it in and I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna take it across the brick and I'm gonna paint across it and right now it looks about right there's a good amount of color going down but it does look like it's flowing into the bricks uh, bricks pretty well and as I paint across it if uh, uh, I shouldn't see, you know, after you paint across it, you leave it for a second or two, you should not see brush marks. They should kind of blend away, but I'm still getting a fair amount of color on the surface. Now, if you can see across here, it looks like I've got a line of uh, uh, a little bit too much resting on the surfaces. So what I need to do is suck some of that off. What I've done here is I've, I've got a... Uh, I don't know if you can see this blue thing here. That's a lid from a cat litter container. And what I've done is I've duct taped it down to that to my cardboard that's on my table here. So what I can do is I can scrape across the edge of it like this without having to try to hold a cup and try to scrape like that and end up knocking my cup over. So if I just tape it like that, so scrape the excess off of there. And then what we'll do is just lightly uh, go across the surface, get off any excess that's on the surface, and that looks like it's pretty good. Now, I have made up a few other tests. I'm going to go ahead, since this is working nicely, paint up these two. Because what will happen is when I do my second coat of ink wash, if it's wrong, well, well, I've already messed up this one. Looks like I need to test it on another one. So it's good to have uh, several undercoated to do the next test for. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and paint this on. And I'm going to be fairly liberal with it. And you'll notice that I'm not really, uh, I don't really have a, a glove on my hand. I probably should, but they just seem a little clumsy for holding pieces. And, and uh, these I want to, I want to be sure that I get all the spots and I don't have big glove thumbprints on it when I get done and that sort of thing. So let's see, let's get it back into the frame here. And I'm just going to just liberally apply this on. And we have the slow dry in here, which will help retard the drying. So I'll have time to suck up the drips and, and uh, that sort of thing. You want to be sure that you get this really good and get it into all the cracks. So we're going to do this side really good here now that I've got it. Now that I've got one side done, uh, you can see that there's certain areas that are kind of pooled up a little bit. So I'm going to scrape it off onto this uh, little cup thing that I have here. And I'm just going to suck up, you know, wherever you see big, big spots. Usually it's like right around the windows here. Usually those are the places you're going to get the, uh, the big spots. 
And if there's any places that look particularly bare or really light, you can just kind of dab on them a little bit. And this will be a little uneven, but that's okay because brick in general has kind of an uneven texture to it. So I think that pretty much gets this side pretty well. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to kind of grab it like this right here so I don't get my fingers into it too bad. And we will do the front side the same way. Okay, now at this point I've completely painted over the piece. And you'll notice, especially on the very tops, it's going to pool up quite a bit. So you want to kind of get that uh, out of the tops there. And then I'm scraping it off, you know, back over here. And uh, I'm going to take a look at the front area here. And usually, you know, around these legs that stick out, wherever you see it pooling up, go on ahead and uh, take, that, take that out. Now, I'm kind of touching places, and where I move my fingers off, you see a little spot there? Once I set this piece down on the table, I will go ahead and touch up any spots like that that, uh, um, that I've re completely removed the stain from. And I think that's probably just about it. So, looking all around the piece, I don't see any really white spots that I missed. i got to find a place to set this down. I'll show you here. Okay, there we go. Now I got the piece set down on the table. Now it's like, where have my fingers been? So I'll go ahead and just kind of touch up those spots. Usually the very tops of the bricks where you got your finger. Where your finger touched the bottom really isn't going to matter too much. Now I do uh, want to mention that sometimes you can use white spray paint to spray paint these instead of uh, brushing it on. I just brushed on uh, flat white house paint for the uh, main base coat. But I have also done spray paint and it works. But spray paint's a little different. Um, if you get it too thick on the spray paint on there, sometimes it gives it a, a glossy surface and sometimes the ink won't stick quite as well. I've also noticed that sometimes with cheap white spray paint, the pigment doesn't bind to it really well, so it'll come off on your brush. And when you scrape off the excess in the cup over here, you'll see this pool of white powder that's coming off of your piece as you, uh, as you scrape your brush off. So I tend to go with uh, just undercoating it with white, you know, flat house paint. 